Hi everyone, welcome to the Simply Seasonal Podcast. Megan and Kara here, and we are diving deeper in the conversation from our cooking show, which airs earlier in the week on simply-seasonal.com. And here you're going to learn the simple ways to use seasonal foods to help you balance, heal, and thrive. So jump in at any time because what we're talking about right now is always relevant to what's going on. And what's going on now is we are still quarantined and we are still going through our kitchen pantries and groceries and trying to make the best out of the foods that we have on hand and stretch a meal. And one of the best ways and foods to stretch a meal is to do that with eggs. So we're talking all about eggs today. Yes, that incredible edible egg. And if you went grocery shopping when hysteria hit off, um, you would have seen that the eggs were one of the first things to go off the shelf. And, and there's, there's good reason for that. I mean, I myself was looking for the eggs because you know that can always make a meal in a pinch. Um, it amps up any meal, and we're going to talk about all the ways we love to use it, um, combining it with pantry items, combining it with leftovers. It's just a great way to stretch out a meal, and it, the nutrition of it, it's like this all-in-one. I mean, it, it is a whole food. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's really a super power food because it's like um, you know, we talk about seeds in this way too, which we're going to get into like in our sprouting um, episode coming up, but you know, eggs are the same thing. Eggs and seeds both have all of the potential for life. So that means it has every nutrient that's needed to make and create life. So it's going to be the perfect food for you to maintain your life. <laughs> and uh, so it really is awesome and, um, and the coolest thing too about it is that you add an egg to something like put an egg on it and it's a meal <laughs> Bam. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah you really can so like right now a lot of us are getting really low on our groceries and our pantry items and you know not sure when they're, we're going to go to the grocery store again or get more food again so if you're going through you know some of your grains or veggies you have some of that stuff you know you can make um, a whole meal just by adding these things together and then boom, put an egg on it. And now you feel like you've actually had something decent to eat. Yes. And that um, is a common weekend breakfast for us. And right now we're kind of just doing it whenever because it almost feels <laughs> like every day is a weekend because <laughs> uh, we're, yeah, we're home and can cook breakfast. Um, but basically just taking any kind of leftovers, any rice, leftover veggies, whether they're roasted, a kick fry, um, taking that and heating that up and topping it with a poached egg is like, bam, there's breakfast. Um, if you have the luxury, you can add some avocado, you can add some fermented foods. Um, there's so much you can do with it. And um, yeah, we love that. <laughs> you know, it's so interesting too, because you were just saying like, if we have the luxury of having avocado and everything, and when I wrote down on our notes, like avocado toast, I was thinking the same thing. I was like, if we have avocado, like that's <laughs> kind of more of a luxury item. And it's so interesting that this time is really um, making us appreciate food. I mean, I'm just kind of getting the, the goosebumps right now. It's really making us appreciate it. It's also getting everyone back into the kitchen. People who rarely ever cook for themselves are cooking. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of good is in terms of food and health is actually going to come out of this, but it's true, you know, an avocado is kind of like a an extra food that's awesome, but an egg, if you know we have them on hand, that can really be a base food that we can put onto a lot of things. I love that. Yeah, and we all know the feeling of having an egg breakfast versus having a breakfast of say, like an oatmeal or just some toast or you know more of a carb based um, breakfast is doesn't last as long so you know if you have that eggy breakfast um, it's going to sustain you through the day um, and that's that's a good feeling right now I don't know just eating and knowing that you're sustained for a while because I don't know about you but um I, I well you're not really a snacker but I'm finding myself snacking less because I'm like oh I don't want to go through my groceries as fast <laughs> yeah because I don't want to have to need more you know yeah oh it's so true it's so I'm really trying to make all my meals count a little bit more, which is what I should be doing anyway, right? So like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
I love that. Yeah. And some other really cool ideas to do too. So we have like the shakshuka recipe, which is on our website. You can go there, which is with this egg episode. And that really, I mean, if you don't have all of those ingredients on hand, you can still make it with, I mean, really essentially it's just like a can of tomatoes with eggs cracked in it. Like the right and spices and you can put any veggies in with it as well. And the more traditional one is more of a Mediterranean style or Italian kind of herbs and spices. We went Mexican style just because we were trying to do something a little bit different. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Totally. So you can like do that any way you want. And all of our recipes are really like that in general. They're just guidelines and recipes in general are just guidelines, modify them with whatever you have on hand. Another great thing that we love making are like the Buddha bowls, um, even something like, a stir fry or a fried rice, right? All of these things, you kind of take like the scraps of what you have and you put them all together. So like a Buddha bowl could be anything, any type of grain that you have, even like a noodle or something that you have left over. Mm -hmm. Um, And then just like little bits of veggies that you have, you know, and then boom, you top an egg with it. It could be a hard boiled egg. It could be poached or fried, you know, you can add it any way that you'd like, you know, fried rice that's usually scrambled in with all of that stuff. Um, But anyway, these are really great things to make. You're kind of like stretching a meal extra long and then you Mm -hmm. add an egg on it and you're Mm -hmm. like, yes, it's a full meal. Right. And, and not even just thinking about this for breakfast, but for dinners as well. I mean, as you're going into the fried rice and things like this. Um, And then of course, don't forget about the frittata or the quiche where the Mm -hmm. egg really is the main ingredient of your meal. Um, it feeds so many people and like feeds them really well. And yeah. this is something I love to, and we're going to talk about, you know, and in our video, we go into why pasture raised eggs are so important. And you might notice that they're a little bit more expensive. Um, but what I love to bring up to people is that you have no problem dropping $6 on some sugar coffee drink but you're cringing at the thought of six dollars for a dozen eggs which can feed six people easily and Mm -hmm. um you know but you know you you that's a lot of money to you but it's not like this is a a really good investment and um really get yourself some nice high quality eggs totally yeah they're they're fantastic and like we were saying they really are the perfect food. So, um, you know, all the nutrients are in an egg here. I have my eggs right here. We could get a little bit more demonstrating. <laughs> so I have my <laughs> pasture raised eggs here. Um, I got these from farmhouse delivery. If you are interested in farmhouse delivery and you live in the Texas area, you can actually get uh, $20 off, um, by using our promo code, simply seasonal, all caps. Um, when you check out and they're great. They're delivering straight to your door. They're really awesome. They might have a little bit of a wait list, but um, get yourself on it because you can start getting groceries. So these eggs are fantastic. And so everything within an egg it has protein, it has fat, iodine, zinc, and zinc we know is so good for your immune system. Um, you know, it has vitamin A, vitamin D. Uh, what other things do we write? Calcium. All of these amazing things are packed in this little, little tiny thing. So it's um, like an all-in-one food. Yes, you get it all in there. And if you've been separating it and only eating the white and not the yolk, you're missing out on most of those nutrients because most of them lie in the yolk. So mm-hmm. let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah, and the omega threes, which and folate, which I also forgot to mention. Yeah, those are all in the are yolk. only in the yolk. Yeah, only in the yolk. And um, mm-hmm. you know, I'm even thinking like vitamin A is fat soluble. So like when you're thinking about immunity, vitamin A, vitamin C, and zinc, those are like your powerhouse um, nutrients for uh, boosting immunity. So and vitamin A is fat soluble, so it needs to be suspended in fat, which is why it's in the yolk. So um, you know when we're taking the yolk away, the only thing that's in the white is half of the amount of protein and what sodium and potassium. That's mm-hmm. it. Whereas that's everything it. else is in the yolk, so it's mm-hmm. like you're not benefiting from the egg at all, and you're going to be malabsorbing that protein sodium and potassium anyway, because like we say all the time, you need to eat the whole food. So that's 
everything nature provides with that food you need to be eating because it will synergize in the body and digest properly and your body is allowed to absorb it properly. If you start taking things away, it's going to be so much harder and you're not going to be able to absorb. Right. And you broke up a little bit there, Megan, but basically saying that um, everything you need to absorb into the egg is comes in this package all by itself. Mm -hmm. So it's like you don't need to take anything away. You don't need to add anything. It's all there right for you, which is incredible. Yeah, exactly. And I know a lot of people take out the yolk because they're afraid of cholesterol. And that mm -hmm. is a huge myth that is still around today. I really, I mean, these things stick really hard in our food culture, unfortunately. Um, but you don't get high cholesterol from eating cholesterol foods. You get high cholesterol from sugar. You get high cholesterol from having a congested liver is essentially what it is. And when the liver is congested and stressed, it produces cholesterol as like a cushion, as like a barrier. So yes, when you have high cholesterol- It's there cholesterol, to help you, yeah. right? Like it's producing yep. the cholesterol to help you. Exactly. So when you see high and cholesterol- And then what we go to do, sorry, then what we go to do is take the medicine to strip it away, whereas your body was making it to help you in the first place. Exactly. It's the same concept like we were talking about last week with a fever, right? You're getting a fever. Yes, it's indicating that there's a problem, but you don't want to just take a medicine to lower it to go, oh, my number's 98 again. I'm fine. No, you're still sick. You just don't have the fever. And actually now you've taken down that barrier. So now the sickness can go deeper. Same thing with cholesterol. If you're only looking at cholesterol numbers and you take cholesterol medication, it's like, doing the same thing, but the, the liver is now stressed and now you just took away that cushion and now the liver is even more exposed and vulnerable and stressed because you didn't take care of the root cause. And that's all from congestion, from poor quality foods that you might be eating, or if sometimes it happens when people are very healthy, they eat really good quality foods, but stress is a huge one for the liver because it has to metabolize all of your hormones. So if the liver is congested, with all of those hormones, then it's also going to produce a lot of cholesterol. So it might not be diet for you, but it could be stress related. Right. Okay. And the other big thing is the vitamin D because um, eggs, the egg yolk is actually one of the few sources, food sources of vitamin D um, mm -hmm. that we can get. And when you look at it, it looks like the sun, right? Which is yeah. so cool. Um, but Really, the best source of vitamin D is getting out in the sunshine, um, but the eggs might help a little bit with that as well. But a vitamin D is another one that you need fat to go along with it. So, mm -hmm. um, in order to actually make it, so you know when we're when we're going fat free and cholesterol free, and you know, and then still going out in the sunshine, we're not we're not getting our vitamin yep. D. So these foods are all really important to keep whole and to, yeah, keep together. <laughs> yep. Yep. Because cholesterol is needed for your body to even absorb and then produce its own versions of vitamin D. So yeah, it's, it's this whole synergy thing that we're always talking about here. We can't be cutting one thing out of the equation because then it's going to mess everything else up. And that's what we've been doing for a very long time now in our country, which is unfortunate. So um, people get very confused about food. And at the end of the day, if it's a whole food, you should be eating it. <laughs> That's right. kind of like our stuff. Don't be cutting out this stuff. Cut out the other crap. <laughs> right. And if it comes from nature, if it's made from nature, then it's all good. Like eat the whole thing. Yep. Yep. The Michael Pollan, if it's made, if it comes, wait, you say. If it's made it. in a plant, don't eat it. But if it's made by a plant, eat it. Love it. <laughs> so true. Yeah. And also a really cool thing is that eggs are seasonal. So it's springtime now. And the reason we see a lot of eggs is because chickens are starting to produce more eggs during this time. So that's really cool. During the winter, they molt and they take time off just like you should have been doing in the winter to help like restore and nourish and ground yourself and give yourself the energy for the fall. Now the chickens have the energy and they're laying more eggs. It's just like it represents fertility. It helps with fertility. You know, eggs is part of fertility. So they're really great for that. Um, but they're so now is egg season, essentially. 
Mm-hmm. Right. It's the it's them sprouting. It's like the animal sprout. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the little mm-hmm. seed. <laughs> totally. And mm-hmm. then, of, of course, uh, which we really get into in our cooking show episode, and we really recommend that you head on over there um, to our website or on our YouTube channel. Either way, um, our egg cha- our episode is awesome, and we go into what you really should be looking for on the labels. And really at the end of the day, the label that you should be looking for is pasture raised. Don't even worry about getting confused with organic or free range or cage free, anything like that. Because unfortunately, all of those things have little gaps in what they don't cover. Mm -hmm. So pasture raise is guaranteeing that they are living on a pasture, which is what you have in your mind of what you think is good. That's pasture (laughs) raise. Um, All the other ones, there's a lot of loopholes that they get through and it's not actually as good as you want it to be. Right. And it's um, egg labeling has become quite difficult to navigate. And, um, and then one thing, just like how um, companies, hang on to different buzzwords and things that people are looking for. The same thing is kind of going on with eggs because people are going, oh, there are these orange oaks. We have this color shell. Like they know that people are looking for different things. Um, You know, they can make the color of the yolk, whatever they want by feeding the animal. So that's why naturally a pasture raised um, egg yolk is going to be that deep color because they're eating like grubs and, you know, they're in the weeds, they're eating dandelions, they're eating, you know, they're, they're, eating all these really deep colored, um, earthy, um, you know, foods and and grubs. Um, But what's going on too is now people are, you know, you can take just a conventional chicken and then feed it some marigolds at the end and it will turn the color, the color of the yolk. So, um, you know, really just look for those pasture rays, just know that they're living. And if the color isn't super dark orange, that's okay. Mm -hmm. Just know that they're eating what they naturally eat. Totally. And I think a farmer actually told me one time that during the winter um, and the fall, right? So either they're producing less, they're not producing as much, um, but also when they do, they're going to be lighter in color because there's not as much rich nutrients um, going on in their diet as much as there is in the fall and the summer or the spring and the summer when there's so much more. So they tend to be darker then. That's what a farmer told me, but like Kara was saying, you know, the, so the yolk isn't necessarily an indicator. The shell isn't necessarily an indicator either, but, um, so you really go by like the pasture raise, get to know your farmer, all of that, you know, that's where you can really trust it. Um, and then also in terms of like the freshness, um, of the egg, I bet all of us have had that experience where we crack an egg and the yolk just completely busts and goes everywhere. And we're like, oh my gosh, I I thought I did it so carefully. Like, why did that do that? Well, that's actually showing the age of the egg, that it's not as fresh. When your eggs are fresh and especially when they're pasture raised, there should be like a dome, like they pop up from the yolk or from the the white. So it should be like a dome. Almost like they're floating. Yeah. So they have that, they have, they're like, ooh, they are, I don't know what the right word is. They're like we're buoyant. Like, <laughs> <laughs> they're buoyant. Like they do this. <laughs> yeah. Um, and they don't break easily at all. Um, right. And also Kara was saying like the shell is harder um, on these pasture raised eggs than they are, of course, you know, with these these hens that have been packed in and they're sick and they're in these, you know, maybe cages and maybe not even in cages and just packed into these big barns and they never see the light of day, their shells are super fragile. So they'll break really easy when you crack them. Um, So just things to look out for. Are we still... Yeah, I know it's hard. I was letting it catch up. I know it's a pretty hard connection today, but we've have, like we said, there's so much information 
information in our episode on eggs. So please visit that. Even we even have charts on what it looks like, what free range versus cage free, and what this, you know, what to look for. Um, please go to our website, simply-seasonal.com. Check out the egg episode, which is the episode of the week, and it's very fitting because we have Easter and Passover and all these holidays that are honoring the egg and understand that the egg is such a symbol of right now in the springtime. Um, so, you know, get into it, use it during this quarantine as a great way to feed your family and nourish everybody. Yeah, we love it. So um, thank you so much for joining us and uh, we hope to see you back next week. Um, and again, check out the cooking show and this is our little podcast and uh, yeah, we will see you then. <laughs> and follow us on social media at Simply Seasonal Cooking Show. Awesome. Yeah. See you next time. Bye. Bye.